Hey math students, time to talk some more about trigonometry. So today what I want to do is I want to look at trigonometry on a grid, okay? Let's say we have an angle and let's say our angle, one side of our angle is going out like this, out along the x-axis, okay? And the other side of our angle is going up like this through the point 5, 12. And what I want to know is, here's my angle, I'm going to call it theta. And what I want to know is, what's the sine of theta? What's the cosine of theta? What's the tangent of theta? What's the cosecant, the secant, the cotangent of theta? And actually today, uh, let's just stick with sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? All the, the relationships, cosecant being the reciprocal of sine, secant being the reciprocal of cosine, cotangent being the reciprocal of tangent, those all hold. Uh, but today let's just focus on the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. So how would we figure that out? Well, here's what I recommend. We would drop a little segment down like that, a little vertical segment, making a right angle. And now I have myself a nice right triangle. So now I can say, oh, okay, well, the sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. All right, good enough. Now, what are the lengths of those sides? Well, look, the Cartesian coordinates there say 5, 12. That means 5 is how far over to the right we went. 12 is how far up we went. So this is 5. This is 12. And the hypotenuse, well, we would just use the Pythagorean theorem, right? So that means I have 5 squared plus 12 squared, uh, which is 25 plus 144, which is 169. That's what this squared is going to be. And the square root of 169 is 13. So this is going to be 13. So what are we finding? We're finding the sine of theta is 12 over 13. Okay, that's opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is 5 over 13. And the tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. That's uh, 5. Nope, no, it's not. It's 12 over 5. All right, not so hard. Let's take a look at another one. Let's see. Uh, and I'm going to keep one of my sides going along the positive x-axis like that. This is called standard position of an angle, okay? Where the initial side is going out like that. And the terminal side will have going out like this. And this time it's going to go through the point 1, 2 squared of 2, which is approximately equal to 1, and that would be 2.4, no, 2.83, I believe. Okay? So it's going to the point 1 and 2 squared of 2. So what are we going to do? Same thing we did last time. We'll drop down this side right there, and then we'll say, okay, well, this is going to be 2 squared of 2. This is going to be 1. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared of 2 squared is, let's see, 2 squared of 2 squared is, 2 squared is 4. Squared of 2 squared is 2. That's 8. Okay, so this thing squared is 1. This thing squared is 8. So this thing squared must be 1 plus 8, which is 9. So this is 3. And what do we have? We have the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. That's 2 root 2 over 3. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 1 third. And the tangent of theta is going to be 2 root 2 over 1. So that's just 2 squared of 2. Okay? Again, not so bad. Let's do... Uh, Actually, tell you what, let's do one where we, uh, we generalize a little bit. 
let's say instead of going through a point that has specific coordinates, we're gonna say this one just goes through the point x, y. All right, let's do the same thing we did before. We will drop down this segment, make a right angle. This side is x units long. This side is y units long. And this side is gonna be, for now, let's call it r, okay? And so what is, uh, what's our sine gonna be? Here's theta here. The sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, that's y over r. The cosine of theta is x over r. And the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, that's y over x. And now what is r? Well, using the Pythagorean theorem, r squared is x squared plus y squared. So that means r must be the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay? This is good to know. Okay? This you might want to put in your brains and keep it there for a while. Okay? Because you're, we're going to use this in the future. So now, matter of fact, I think I'm just going to write it over here. The sine of theta is y over r. The cosine of theta is x over r. And the tangent of theta is y over x. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Okay. So let's take this, and what I want to do now is I want to do something we haven't done before, and that is, just accidentally erased my axes. Um, I want to say, well, what if I have this angle, an obtuse angle? We haven't looked at obtuse angles before. And there's a good reason why we haven't looked at obtuse angles before, because we've defined sine and cosine and tangent and cosecant and secant and cotangent in terms of a right triangle. And there's only two types of angles in a right triangle, one right angle and two acute angles. So we haven't seen obtuse angles. But what we can do is we can use these uh, equations here, these, these uh, uh, generalizations, and we can well, we can generalize, okay? We can expand our idea of what a sine and a cosine and a tangent are. So this time, let's say we're going to go through the point. Uh, we'll say this is negative 4 and 6. All right? So that point there is the point negative 4, 6. And my angle, theta, the initial side is going out the x-axis, and the terminal side is going through that point. So, what is the sine of theta? Well, uh, oh, I guess we have to figure out what r is, don't we? Okay, uh, remember what r is? Oops, I didn't write that over here. r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, so let's see. r is going to be the square root of 16 plus 36, because it's negative 4 squared, negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16, plus 6 squared is 36, and that equals the square root of 52, and if you divide 52 by 4, you get 13, so this is the square root of 4, also known as 2, times the square root of 13, okay? That's what r is. I'll put that right there, 2 root 13, oops, oh, it's a terrible looking 13. There we go. All right, so now, what's the sine of theta? Sine of theta is y over r. So that's 6 over 2 root 13, also known as 3 over the square root of 13. The cosine of theta is, this is interesting, negative 4 over 2 square root of 13, also known as negative 2 over the square root of 13. Now you may be saying to yourself, why isn't he rationalizing the denominator? I don't feel like it. <laughs> okay, I find rationalizing the, the denominator to be a, an overrated experience. 
Uh, sometimes we do it, but a lot of times I just think there's no real point in it. Let's just leave it alone. And today's one of those days. So I'm just leaving it alone, leaving the, the denominator like that. Uh, so the tangent of theta is going to be y over x, right? 6 divided by negative 4. Or I could also just take my sine and divide it by my cosine, remember? Tangent is sine divided by cosine. So, but, uh, but anyway, I did it this way. 6 divided by negative 4, and that comes out to negative 1.5. So I want you to notice something here. With an obtuse angle going up into quadrant 2 like that, you actually end up with a negative cosine. The sine is still positive, but this time the cosine is negative, and the tangent is also negative. Interesting, okay? So what this means is we can now find uh, the sine and cosine of not just angles in quadrant one like this, but also angles in quadrant two, even angles in quadrant three down here, which is kind of a strange idea, but it can be done. If you have an angle going down like this, where this is your angle theta. Not, not this one, not the smaller one, but this big thing here is your angle theta. Then what you're going to get is a negative sine, because your y-coordinate's negative, a negative cosine, because your x-coordinate is negative, and since your tangent is y over x, a positive tangent. Hmm. As a matter of fact, you can also have angles going into quadrant 4 down like this. This time my angle's going all the way around like that. And this time my cosine is going to be the x-coordinate. This is going to be a positive cosine, a negative sine, and a negative tangent. So when you're in quadrant one, everything is positive. When you're in quadrant two, your uh, sine is positive, but the other two are negative. When you're in quadrant three, your tangent is positive, but the other two are negative. And when you're in quadrant four, the cosine is positive and the other two are negative. Okay? This expands our idea of what sines and cosines and tangents are. And uh, I'm going to let you chew on that for a little while, and we'll continue in the next video. Okay? See ya.